Yo, I'm Ryan. Welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to go over this workflow that I made to demonstrate the brand new audio and feature reactivity that I've added to advanced live portrait. So by the end of this video, you should hopefully understand how you can use external sources of info like, like audio to control the expression of a face in a photograph or a video. This is based on the original repo advanced live portrait by none other than powerhouse man. Uh, so all the credit for the expression editing and the, the, the wrapper for live portrait goes to him. All I've done here is uh, add this additional functionality to it. And I think it's really fun. Uh, I hope, I hope other people do too. So in this example, we're going to use three different features to control three different parts of a facial expression. I'll go over the three features and also briefly what, what these features are, and then I'll go over how we're using them in each of the successive expression editors. So let's start at the beginning. Here, we're going to use, the, I mentioned three features. We're going to use an, an audio feature, a manual feature, and another audio feature. And I did this just to demonstrate one that you can modulate multiple facial expressions independently and two that these features are interchangeable so we're using these two fe feature sources here audio and a manual feature but there are many that are available through the flex features uh, in my my node suite they include all of these and more so what's really great is that while audio is very fun to use and there's a lot of use cases for that these are all completely interchangeable. So we could just swap, you know, proximity feature for audio over here and it would work the exact same way. So I've, I've also included some of the ways that you can manipulate features and, and we'll get into that in a second. So to use the, to, we have to extract an audio feature from some audio. So, and I wanted to use two different instruments from the audio to manipulate two different parts of the facial expression so we're using this royalty free sample audio here and separating it into its component parts so that we can use the drums and in this case the synth so here's the isolated drums uh, and here is the synth So we extract and we're using the amplitude envelope here. And this is what the feature looks like. This is the feature visualized for you here. And it goes from zero to one. And since it's a four to the floor drum beat, it comes out pretty, pretty even keel as one might say. Okay, so we've got this one audio feature. Then just to show it can be done, we're using this manual feature. And this is what it looks like. It's just a line. So it should smoothly modulate the chosen parameter over the course of the entire animation. And finally, our second audio feature um, we're taking from the synth and we've used this feature renormalize node. As you saw with the drums, generally speaking, features are normalized from zero to one. In this case, we're renormalizing it from negative one to one. So you can see the minimum here is negative one, the maximum is one. All right, and then we use these three features respectively to modulate these three pieces of the facial expression. So here's our input image, and let's go over the flex expression editor. And this is very, very similar to the expression editor that Powerhouse Man introduced. However, I've added some uh some additional parameters here um from constrain min max down are all new so for the first expression editor we're using our renormalized synth feature and we just put give it to this feature input here and then let's take a look down here you can see that the feature param is set to pupil x and i've set pupil x to negative 14.5 here, the feature param is just the parameter of the expression that we want to modulate with the feature. Simple as that. We've chosen uh, pupil x, which will move the pupils from left to right, and starting a starting value of negative 14.5. 
You'll also see that I've set the feature mode to absolute, which means that the modulation will occur relative to zero. Whereas if we selected relative mode, it would occur relative to this value. All right. So here, the only thing that's happening is the pupil is getting modulated according to the synth, the left and right of the pupil. So we can only do one per flex expression editor. We can only manipulate one parameter with a feature at a time, but you can chain as many together as you want. So here's the second one. And in this case, I, we're going to modulate the roll of the head and start with a starting value of 15. And wh what feature are we using? We're using the manual feature. So it should roll the head from left to right smoothly over the entire animation. That's what we expect to see. So I've not only set rotate roll, which we're going to modulate with the feature parameter, but I've also raised the eyebrows to 15. So she just looks really surprised while she's being manipulated by this audio. Um, and this will not be modulated. This will just stat be static uh, at 15 from, from here on out. Editing Ryan here. You can tell time has passed because I'm wearing a hat. I uh, popped in to say that if you actually want to make her surprised in the output video, you're going to need to set the eyebrow parameter in the final expression editor. Because as I outlined in these notes, um, it, each of these sets the new starting position for the, for the expression. So just needed to give you that quick update. Back to that other idiot. Finally, we use our remaining audio feature, this drum feature, to modulate the pitch so that's forward and backwards the pitch of the head and i set it to nine here um so and here's the output you saw it at the beginning uh it's exactly as we'd expect so a few notes are the constrained min and max are by default set to true but if you want to get some exorcism simulator stuff going on disable this because the this will prevent the modulation from going out of the bounds of any of these given uh, min minimum and maximums here. So people X negative 15, positive 15. If we turn this off and, you know, happen to have some manipulate our feature to be like, like re a really weird value, you know, then it, it can go out of bounds and make some really just terrifying stuff. The strength is just a strength multiplier. You can use it to reduce the reduce or increase the strength of the feature modulation. Feature threshold is the minimum feature value that we will consider for modulation. So if we set the feature value to like point, point 0.2 or something, it would get rid of these, it, it would get rid of these like probably hi hats right there or what, what those are. The feature param we already went over and the feature mode we already went over. One other note is that the value for a parameter in a previous editor changes the starting position of that parameter in the next editor. So let's let's throw in a little example here. So we're going to increase rotate pitch in the previous editor, and this is not going to be modulated, but it will change the starting position for the next editor. So see how she's leaning forward? We have this, this handy preview here, thanks to Powerhouse Man. Um, you see how she's like leaning forward and bobbing her head from a, a more forward position. That's because of what we, we've done. All right, that should cover it. We went over what features are, how to extract a couple of them and manipulate them. And then, of course, how to use those features to manipulate the expression of a face in a photo or a video. I hope you find this fun. I know I had a lot of fun testing it. So I can't, you know, I can't wait to see what uh, what everybody makes. Additionally, as a bonus, uh, I will I will include an alternate workflow created by ACATS and it adds depth flow at the end. So we're going to go from a perfectly still photograph to an animated face that's got depth 2.5D. So it's from a still image to a straight up video. Pretty cool stuff. His depth flow nodes are also compatible with my feature system here. So if you want more information on his stuff, check out his channel, which I will link in the description. If you end up having fun with this or if, uh, found this useful at all, uh, feel free to subscribe. So we're chilling over here and the more the merrier. 
Also, feel free to like the video and uh, follow me on all the stuff. Okay, I'm still Ryan. Bye-bye.